I'd like to just spend a few moments talking about ice safety. And this isn't going to be your typical ice safety tip. And the very first one is to spend the time, if you're gonna spend a fair amount of time on the ice, get yourself a float suit, okay? These are made by various companies. Uh, this one happens to be a, a rise suit by Clam. I like this one. The second thing that I would recommend that you do, and basically it's a, it's a rope system that I can throw out to uh, someone who's in the ice. There's a bunch of rope in here that uncurls so that the person can tie it around themselves and then you can, can get them towed out. You can make sure that they're safe and that they're not going to end up you know, going down underneath the ice. So uh, this is a very simple setup. There's many of them out on the market like it. Just a regular rope that you can throw. These are, to me, the most important thing to carry along. In early ice season, I wear them around my neck. Just in case when the ice is thinner, I go through, I can always just grab them off my neck. And these are little spikes. Essentially, we'll put a purchase into the ice and I can drag myself out. Okay, so it's a, to me, that's one of the most difficult parts when you have bulky clothing on. You have no way of purchasing the ice and getting yourself dragged out. These will work really well. Later in the season, I've just put them in my pocket. These are very simple items. They're not very expensive, but they basically will help save your life if you really get into a tough situation. Uh, the next thing that I like is to, when I'm checking the ice, the ice drills that we have now are so lightweight that I normally just bring a drill along. And I like to go ahead and drill a hole. And then there's one really nice, another little item that I think really helps is when I clear the hole out, I use a little ice uh, scoop to take all the slush and stuff out that has a marker with inches on it. And so I can literally put this down the hole, I can catch this part under the ice, and essentially then I will have, have a depth reading and I know approximately how safe the ice is. One of the things that I do want to spend some time on is the fact that water under the snow can be a, a sign of having some real problems. You have many, many lakes, but we also get a lot of snow every winter. And uh, if it's a big, vast lake, like some of the big lakes in Minnesota, normally the wind will blow and wind sweep those areas of snow back to the shorelines and the middle part of the lake will be fine. In those situations, you'll want to watch for the big cracks uh, when you're out on a big lake. Trying to negotiate the crack can be a problem, uh, number one, because the ice shoves up, but number two is because some of those areas are unsafe. Those cracks can open up a significant amount. The thing with heavy snow like we see here behind me is that on the smaller lakes, there is a little bit of wind effect. When it does that, it can get real deep and it can actually sink the ice. Those are the times where you need that ice drill and you need to find out exactly how much ice you have. The one thing about snow is it's a fantastic insulator and it can be 30 below zero and you still will have that layer of slush and water underneath that snow. Other places that I look for is where there's a stream or a little creek that comes out into a lake. Normally right by the stream if it's good flow it'll be open yet uh, or it may be frozen but anything that's fairly close to there and that's a warning signal. Uh, places that a lot of people will, will kind of forget about will be an area, let's say, underneath a bridge between lakes. They'll think that that's going to be good because it's the middle of winter, and in uh, many cases those bridges narrow that current down and they make the ice right by the bridge unsafe check it out and I think if you do that you'll have an enjoyable time on this winter wonderland that we have. Enjoy your time on the ice but please be safe.